Michael Giblin with Feathershop.com and welcome to Michael Explains It All, the Daddario Ascende episode, chapter, I don't know. Uh, Ascende, uh, let me tell you, as somebody who is very white, saying Ascende sure makes me feel very cultured and international and mysterious Ascende. Uh, I'll stop, but it's very, very, very fun to say. You should try it. Go ahead, try it. Wasn't that, wasn't that fun? Yeah, Ascende. So these are violin strings that are made by Daddario, a company that's uh, based in New York, and so they're completely made in the US of A. They are a pretty new set of strings, so I don't know if everybody knows about them. The point of this whole episode is that I'm gonna talk about these strings for a while, a while play them for you, show a funny little graph to kind of show you what you're hearing, just a little something to add another dimension to these uh, videos because when you're trying to find strings, it can be very expensive and you don't know, you know what strings are gonna go well with your violin. So this is just an opportunity for us to talk about strings and I'll show them to you and play them for you. Um, I'm not getting paid by Daddario or something to say this, so maybe you can trust me. Maybe, I don't know, you should. So I have the Fiddler Man Artist Violin and also the Holstein Two Star Bow that I've been playing. It's the same instrument and violin that I've been playing all these strings on. So someday I'm gonna make a nice back to back to back to back to back to back to back times 20 strings so you can see them all uh, to compare. That being said, I did change studios halfway through all these so that's not completely scientific. But that was sort of the goal. Let me talk about these strings. The point of Daddario was they supposedly, you know, consulted with all the string teachers in the US and that must have just been a terrible <laughs> experience to have to get input from all of them. But there are four things that they supposedly aim to create with uh, these strings. One was a wide tonal palette, pitch stability, a longevity, and affordability. I can't really speak to all of these, um, but I will start with the last one, affordability. This is a big, I think that one of the biggest selling points of the strings is that they are our, a budget set of strings. They are very affordable. At the time of filming this, they are something like 20 to, something like 20, 20 to 22 dollars, roughly around there. At the time of filming, I know that prices will change and if this video is still around in 10 years, you'll be laughing at how cheap strings were. You'll be like, oh, I had it so good back then. I'll be like, when I was your age, strings used to cost $20. Um, <laughs> which is what I'm gonna sound like. Well, I used to have to record in 1080p. And that was the highest quality. Anyways, okay. Um, I'm just having so much fun doing this. I can't stop myself. Longevity was the third one. I can't really, again, speak to that, but that was sort of the goal was creating a string that you didn't have to change every three or four months. You could leave them like six months or longer, or, you know, I'm sure there are people that would just leave them on until they break, but you should change your strings more often than that. Just because you can, you'll be surprised at, you know, how good your instrument will sound with a new set of strings. So do that. Uh, number two was pitch stability. And I can speak to that, that I put these on two days ago and they've been letting them kind of warm up and settle in and stretch out. And they really haven't budged that much. So that was a big thing is that teachers uh, don't really want to spend that long tuning all their students' strings. And so they are a synthetic core, which is kind of surprising that even with the synthetic core that they will uh, stay stable. That's also great for tuning. They're easier to tune than a steel core string. Um, and the, the first one that, you know, Daddario mentions is that they want, wanted to create a wide tonal palette. And that is a very subjective, uh, you know, goal or how you're hard to define. What is a wide tonal palette? Um, to me, that's a little bit wishful thinking. Cause it's like really, you, you sort of get what you pay for. That for 20 bucks, like this isn't gonna, they're not gonna have the same tonal palette as strings that are five times as expensive. So don't get your hopes up that you're gonna replace your Ava Parazzi's or your Visions or your Pies or something 
with this um, because they're, they're not going to be at the same level. Not to criticize them and say like, oh, these are garbage strings. They're very nice strings. They're just not, they're not like a solo string. They're designed for students who are ascending. Ascending. Um, which, which, which who, who isn't an ascending student? You know, where, I'm glad they didn't decide to name them like plateaued strings or I didn't practice this week because we went on vacation and I have gymnastics. Um, <laughs> or uh, I'm just so tired. <laughs> strings, no. Okay, there are lots of names that you, they could have named this. Uh, but it, it's a, an aspiring name. It's something to live up to. You are ascending. Okay, <laughs> I apologize, but if you're still here, uh, uh, keep, I don't know, leave me a comment or something. Let me know you're still with me. Or uh, what? Let, let me know at least when you check out, okay? Let's say like, oh, I made it to the seven minute mark and then I just couldn't handle it anymore. Uh, I'm going to stop now and play them for you a little bit so you can hear what they sound like. <laughs> I'll play some open strings, right, so you can hear. I would say, you know, when you put them on for the first time, give them a little bit of time because they, they do start off kind of, I mean, all strings have a very sort of metallic-y sound, that new string sound. When you first put them on and they have mellowed out um, quite a bit and, and they've sort of, you know, developed a little bit. There's a little bit more depth to them now. A little bit wider of a tonal palette, if you know what I'm saying. Do you, do you, do you, can you, can you smell that tonal palette? No, I don't know. Um, but that's sort of the thing about strings and in general, and why I'm making these videos is because everybody will have a different uh, need or desire for what their instrument will sound like. And you might have a, you know, a really warm, you know, really dark covered instrument that you want something brighter that's going to really open it up. I, I wouldn't say that these have a very strong flavor one way or the other. And the, really, I think they're designed more for students that just need some, some really more, you know, a high, highly durable string, something that's not going to break on them. And that sounds very accurate and responds quickly. Yeah, I think there are these Ascente strings, you know, hit the nail on the head. They don't offer a ton to be desired um, in the like brilliance or warmth. If anything, they are they're 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 more on the subtle side. They're not a really they're not a very powerful or dynamic and string, but they're very clear. Then it's it's I wouldn't say that they're you know they're they're pretty much. Smack in the middle. I would. I think it will be interesting to see this. These compared to, like the dominance or also the the, the fiddler man strings.
they, re they respond quickly, they're very clear, they project very nicely. Obviously, I'm not raving about them, but they're not, it's, they're not gonna blow you, blow you away or anything. If anything, my, a critique would be is even as after they've settled in for a while, they still just have a little, it has just a little bit of this like sort of nasally sound where I'm still, I'm still waiting for the tone to just like open up and instead it still just stays kind of this a little bit tight sound. It's, it's not dramatic, it's not a deal breaker. I wouldn't say don't get him because of that, but just. I mean, there, there's a lot, there's a lot of tonal palette even within this no, within this one note on the A string. But to me, it's like it, that. Nah, I really want no. I would rather have it open up, and and for me, it's still just staying in that like kind of right here range, and, and so, um, it's it's um, I I know this violin can do that too. That's so that's why what's been interesting to put all these different strings on the same instrument, and so that I know that it has that capability. Um, something we're gonna talk to a little bit. I think why I, I do believe the arts are good. Uh, like long strings, long uh, longevity and durability wise, is that the materials that they're made out of are, are very interesting. The E, of course, is a, just a tin, you know, uh, carbon steel, pretty standard E. The A is an aluminum wound, and what's special about the A is that it's basically like double wrapped. It's like twice as it's thick as you know a standard aluminum A string. So, so that really I think is gonna do a lot for the durability and um, not, not wearing out so quickly because actually A's, unless, I mean, unless there's something wrong, a lot of times E's will snap just because there's something sharp or something, but a lot of times A's wear out because we just play A, I think more often as a string percentage wise. And then D and G are, I guess all, A, D and G are a synthetic core. A is wrapped in aluminum. The D and G are wrapped or wound in Monel, which is a fantastic restaurant in Nashville, if you're in the Nashville area. Um, or, I almost called it Monet, but it's not, not Monet, it's Monel, which is a nickel copper alloy. And it's just like, it's very resistant to corrosion. So that's really great for if you have sweaty hands or something, it's, they're not gonna be uh, that you know, they're, they're not gonna be affected by the moisture on your string. So that's great. So those are all really great materials. I think I have a little bit of a graph I'll talk to you a little about here uh, to explain kind of what all these colors meant. All right, I'm not gonna go too in depth here. I'm gonna try to cover this quickly, but basically this is just a graph showing you all the frequencies that we're hearing. So even when we're just hearing just an A, you're hearing the fundamental pitch, which is at the bottom, this is A440. And then here's where all our theory kicks in. An octave above that is 880, which is what we're hearing next. And then it keeps going up and up all these uh, harmonic series is what actually we're hearing. I can't speak incredibly scientifically about what it all means. I will bring over the graph from the dominance just to see a little bit of a comparison. And do keep in mind that even though this is some pseudoscience, I was in a different space when I recorded the dominance. And also, you know, I might have been a little bit farther away from the camera or I might have had the levels a little bit higher on one or the other. So they're not going to be exactly the same. But I do think it is interesting to see them side by side and not just compare the audio, but also to compare the visual representation of what it is we're hearing. I do think it's interesting to look at the decay of notes when I release the string, how how much it rings. That's a really good visual representation of that. And also, how many other frequencies you're hearing, even when I'm just playing a single pitch, uh, and how strong you see each one of these overtone series. I hope that was at least a little interesting and I'll return you to your normally scheduled programming now. All right, one last thing I don't think I mentioned is that they are all medium tension. 
uh, which is great, which is always what I recommend. You can get fancy and sometimes for other strings and getting different gauges, but they're all, uh, Ascentes are all medium tension, so that really just clarifies things. If you're interested in picking up the Adario Ascente strings, you can click right up here. You can buy them from fiddlershop.com. And also we'd love it if you subscribe to the channel so we can keep in touch. If you wanna know more about Fiddler Shop in general, you can click on this video. It's down here, it's really funny. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Be well and practice well.